everyone, my name is Shelby and this is the YouTube series where I reveal what's inside these mystery pottery molds I found on Gumtree. Hello and welcome to part 36. This is my favorite time of the week. Um, going back through all the content and the piece that I made throughout the week um, and showing it to you guys. It's really exciting and um, it's always really awesome to see how the finished result comes out. So this mold is um, medium sized and it's got holes on either side. So I have to pour the first side up, tip it out, then flip it over, pour the other side up. Um, I do it on the same day so that the setting time's rather similar. So here I am pouring that up, um, a little bit overfilled. Sometimes I get a little bit trigger happy in a way. Um, is that the saying where I get a little excited and put too much into it than what I need? But that's okay, scrapes off. I pull the rubber band off because it's dried out enough that it's ready to reveal using that rubber kidney, my beautiful rubber kidney. And you saw that it kind of like popped open as I was like using it. So that's when I know it's definitely ready to pull apart. So I open it up to reveal these cutie little critters there are three kangaroos and three koalas, all in different poses, so they're quite sweet. So first off, we'll go back and look at the mold. So if you're looking at for this mold to use, or maybe you're just curious to see what it looked like before I poured it, um, here it is. So it did say koalas and kangaroos on the side, um, it's number 922 inside they looked really small and i wasn't sure quite how they were going to look and then it also had this part that i wasn't sure whether it went on this kangaroo or not but when i opened it up it was clear that it was the leg to go on the kangaroo um so i'll just have to cut those bits off and like the pouring spouts off and attach that together so this is um one of the most satisfying parts i find is taking those pouring spouts off all of this clay that i cut off or get scraped off the top of the mold it all gets recycled and used again and as i was cutting it i noticed that that little koala actually just sits on like a perch like it's hanging off a branch and i put it on my finger and i thought this was really cute the they are really small so i'd say the tallest height is maybe like four centimeters five centimeters if that um the smallest one is like two centimeters and i kind of thought that it would be really cute to make like little dangly like koala earrings um i still haven't had a chance to test sort of like hanging earrings or like those sort of like drop down earrings in my work yet um but i thought this has got a lot of potential for that so because these pieces are really small um, again with winter I'm taking a lazy route out um, but yeah for a number of reasons I'm doing this I'm doing the antiquing again so I'm using the brown because I find black a bit harsh and it sort of gives it a really nice 70s vintage aesthetic underneath the glaze so I'm gonna be doing the other glaze tests that I didn't get a chance to do on an earlier reveal um, so trying out some different colors and just sort of making these little pieces really funky Another reason why I'm doing that is because even though these are really cute, um, they're quite small and their faces are, I, I want to say they're a little bit creepy. Um, the koalas especially, I can't fit my usual style and I just, I don't know, I just find that their faces are more of a vintage style, realistic kind of figurine. Um, and it's it's so tiny to try things on and i know i'm taking the easy way out and maybe not challenging myself enough this week but i think that when it's this cold it makes it really tricky to i guess spend the time on pieces and give them the attention they need when i'm literally freezing and i don't want to be out in my studio because it's all exposed it's all open um and i don't have much warmth and it literally got to negative degrees this week um so me talking about the cold again i'm gonna look back on these videos and be like gosh you just carried on about how cold it is um but yeah so i antique these um and you can kind of see on these koalas like they're, they're it's almost got like a weird schnoz like their noses are almost like a what they're called like a ah uh, a furby a furby they look like furby mouths 
they look like those little Furbies. And um, their ears even look like Furby ears because they're pointy. And it's, oh, man, Furbies were, like, really cool. And I really liked them. And I had one once. Um, and there's a long story why I don't have it. But... <laughs> They were kind of low-key, really creepy. Like, I can't believe I really wanted one of those. But looking back, I think they're so cool still because there's so much nostalgia. But it was kind of weird. Um, the one that I had used to, like, talk <laughs> just, like, at random times. Like, you wouldn't even be playing with it. It would be, like, in the corner somewhere. And it would just sort of, like, say, Burby loves you. Or, like, what? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Just bring back memories, these little things. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> enjoy my Furby imitation. If you don't know what they are, you need to look them up because then you'll get my reference. Um, so yeah, antiquing these, which is a lot of fun. I love the reveal. The other thing I wanted to say is, um, oh, so I'm showing you which glazes I use this week. I use all Chrysanthos Bar 1 um, just to test them out and see how the colors come out. Um, the other thing I was going to say is I'm loving all your comments. I haven't had a chance to respond to many at the moment because it's been so full on because we're working on the new studio, so I'm not freezing, um, which is really exciting. Um, but just to also like a little F why I to be kind and nice and all of that because um, this is art and it's very experimental and it's all fun and I'm showing you the process so I'm kind of like inviting you in so please be kind in the comment section um, because yeah it, a lot of work goes into these videos and I'm not a perfect person that can do absolutely everything um, and I love your suggestions suggestions are amazing but don't tell me how to do my job because <laughs> I'm literally just doing this for the fun of it um, it's not me telling you that you should be doing this or you should be doing that. It's literally me going, this is what I did. I don't know how I'm, it's going to go. We'll see how it turns out at the end. So yeah, that's my little FYI. Um, but I've been loving like this, starting this YouTube has been so incredible because I wasn't a YouTuber before this. I didn't even watch YouTube. But coming on here and seeing the community that is in the comments section, watching you guys interact in the comments, I don't get time to respond often, but seeing what you guys are saying, it's just so amazing um, and it's so wonderful. So what I thought I might um, say on that note of like an FYI is if you've got suggestions or ideas or things you'd like to see in these videos, let me know. Like if you've got an, a cool concept for a mold reveal, like for example, could you do something doing this technique or could you do something using the colors of red, blue and orange I don't know whatever it might be um let me know below because I'm more than happy to take them on and um sort of implement them in the videos and sort of make it more engaging for you as well to see your ideas come to life in the videos um I know that I do get a lot of questions to do sort of like uh like tips and tricks videos I can absolutely do that um I put a little tips and tricks in this one as I pack the kiln, but I'm happy to do one of those videos down the track. I just don't have time at the moment, but I will do more of that sort of informative video where I just show you one step of the process for you. So the first thing that I'm going to show you for tips and tricks is a little bit of kiln maintenance. So my kiln, the hinge gets a little bit rusty um, because of the heat and the moisture. So when it gets a little bit rusty and a little bit um, caught, I get some WD-40. I spray it in there so that the hinge is nice and lubricated and it moves nice and smoothly and then this is how I set my kiln so they're really simple you just click start and it will tell you cone firing so you click yes I want a cone firing and then it has a delay setting so if you want to fire it later at night you can put a delay on it it also has a preheat so if you want to heat it up a little bit warmer you can do the preheat and then you can set your cone so your cone depends on your clay and your glazes and whatever it might be I set my to cone five for my glaze firing because I do a mid fire clay and then you can pick your speed of how fast it heats up and you can also hold the end temperature and then it will say ready one um, and then it starts clicking and I've got the clicking noises here um, under my voice you can hear that um, and that's pretty much it they're so easy to use so if you are looking at getting your own kiln 
they are so easy don't be overwhelmed they are wonderful things um and it is so wonderful when you can fire your own work at home so makes it really simple and you can also check that you've set it on the right thing as well um so don't stress if you're worried you can click review and it will show you that it's got the right temperature and comb but here is what they look like Aren't they cute? Um, not as realistic as what I guess like the mold was intended with those colors that I've used, but they've got a really nice pastel 70s vibe again, and I really love that. So we'll start off with this one that looks like a Furby. I really like that pink glaze. I only did one coat. I think that that's gonna look really gorgeous and some like floral pieces. I love this brown. Again, testing more browns. I'm just trying to find whether there's a nice brown out there um, that I love to use. But yeah, that's taking some time. Um, now this one I think is the brown as well. This is what I mean about forgetting which glazes I've used. And then this is a blue color on the right that I tested. Um, I really like the brown because it reminds me of that really vintage pottery that you see in the op shop that's so beautiful and has so many memory, memories and cherished moments involved with them. So this one again is that pink color and then we've got the blue again i realized that when i glazed them i should have done like a kangaroo as pink and a kangaroo as um blue and then a koala as pink and a koala as blue but i didn't think that far ahead i just kind of painted whatever one i picked up um so i then have this little sort of like rock wallaby kangaroo and it is so cute how it's kind of like perching um i didn't state before with the like koala i love how it hangs off like you could put it on a little shelf kind of like hidden on a shelf but i really like how this rock wallaby kind of um it's meant to be a kangaroo but it looks like a rock wallaby to me how they kind of perch on their little rock thrones i think they're really gorgeous um the lavender glaze is not as uh, pigmented as I like but then again I've only put one coat on so it depends on whether I do you know two or three more coats what that might look like or even on a whole piece that has purple as an undertone whether that complements it really nicely um, so I've got a, a lovely brown again um, I think this I'm gonna say that that was the antique color the antique mustard but I'm not sure I'll have to watch back this video um, and see which one I painted what. And then the lavender again. And then I tested the yellow one more time from an earlier reveal. And it's a crowd favorite. I like this yellow. I think it's got a really lovely tone. And I'm going to use that on a lot. And I love that it's called, the glaze is actually called pumpkin. And I definitely get a nice like squash pumpkin vibe from it as well. But here they all are. I actually thought as I sort of pulled them out with how small they are, they look like those little figurines you used to get in the Yowies. So when I was a kid, my Nana used to collect the Yowie toys that you used to piece together and they were all Australian natives and they came in a little egg, um, kind of like a kinder surprise for people that aren't Australian and didn't get Yowies. Um, it had like a little toy in it, but it was like a, sh a little animal. And these are like the same size as the ones that you used to get. Like they're so little and intricate, like they used to come parts to put together. So I actually went to a supermarket and they recently brought back Yowies. They, you couldn't get them for a while, but they recently brought back Yowies and I had to get some to show you um, what's inside and to show how like these are like the same size that the, the Yowie toys used to be that were all Australian native animals and you get like a little card. So I'll show you. You get like a little card that explains some facts about the animal and you get the figurine and I, I just thought they were so cool. My nan collected them all and I instantly thought of that when they came out of the kiln. So here they are going inside. But yeah, do you do you remember Yowies? Um, like the ones that you used to like puzzle piece together and the little cool, how cool they were. Anyway, I <laughs> had a lot of fun with this and I haven't opened the rest of them up yet, but I'm excited to see what animals are inside. I pieced this together for the TikTok content and the Instagram content to pretend like it was inside. And this is just the behind the scenes of that. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you think of this piece. Um, I really like it, but make sure to like and subscribe for part 37.